We're going to go over our packages, a little bit about dealing with data and file folders for storing the data for the labs, and talk about two more things uh, about how order matters in an R Markdown document, and talk a little bit about where the output goes. Let's start with R packages. Now, I'm sure you've already installed R packages at this point in the course. Let's say you were looking at lab one. So I went to the lab manual, you're scrolling down, and let's take a look at uh, this part, just getting started here. We see that uh, we're going to do two lines of code. Let's take these pieces of code and put them into the document we're making. First of all, I'm going to make a, our code block, put these lines of code in there. Now let's talk about these things. Okay, the first part is library, and we've got two parentheses, and inside we've got data table. So what does this line of code do? Well, it turns on the package called data table. In order for it to turn on, you need to have that package installed. To check if you have it installed, go to the Packages tab. You can scroll down, it's in alphabetical order. We should see that I have data table. There it is. Notice it's not clicked on. That means that the functions that we get to use from this package won't work. This package has lots of different functions that uh, we don't use in this course. If you wanted to look at that, you could click the name of it, scroll down, and all of these things we're looking at here are uh, different functions that we could use from this package. Look at this one, whoops, fread. It's called a fast and friendly file finagler. And basically what that means, is it's a helpful function for reading in data files. This is, in fact, the very same function that we're using on the second line, fread. Let's comment out the first line. That means it's not going to run. Let's talk about this second line. Um, it's not going to run. If we try to run it, we get an error. It says, could not find function fread. Right? That's because the package isn't, hasn't been turned on. Um, let me see if actually I can... Yes. I will take the extraordinary step of deleting. Are you sure you would wish to uninstall this package? Yes, I, I am. Okay, let's go down and let's see. We are now missing the library data table. So if I was to try to run this very first line, it says error in library data table. There is no package called data table. If you see an error like this, that means you need to install the package. It's easy to do that. In the packages view, just click the install button and type in the name of the package. Make sure install dependencies is on. Um, choose install from the repository. Press install. And R will install the packages for you. Usually you'll, you'll see a bunch of stuff happening. If you're on RStudio Cloud, just wait a little bit. Sometimes it takes 30 seconds for something to show up here. But if you follow those steps, it will eventually install the package. All right, so now data table should be should be there, here it is. And what, because it is there, we should be able to run this line of code. So let's do that. Okay, what happened? We didn't get an error. We got a message telling us that something about this package. We can also see that R clicked on the data table package. If you want to unload the package from memory, you can unclick it. And when you unclick it, it actually shows you a script that 
is running to do the unclicking for you. So you can click it on if you want, and or you can run this line of code to click it on. And that's what this is doing. It is, let's comment, um, loading the package into memory. Now that it's loaded into memory, we can use functions that are inside the package. So now we can use the fread function. So let's try to do that. Oops, it's not working. Why isn't it working? Is the function, can we view the function? Um, we should be able to if you press question mark and then type the name of the function. Uh, we can see that it's there, it's, so that's not the problem. The actual problem here is uh, what's inside this part. We're going to suspend our conversation about this for a moment and um, talk about some of these other things down here. Because this part, reading in a data file, relates to this question here about knowing how to load a CSV file using data table and fread. All right. So we have talked about installing in our package. We have talk, talked about loading a package using library. We've shown you how to click on a package to load it up in the packages tab by clicking here. Um, this last question, understanding why knitting would fail if you did not load a library you need in your RMD file. Hmm. Let us talk about this question when we get to this section on why first things first matters. Okay, so I guess that puts us uh, back to why this line of code isn't working. We've loaded the library, but I want this run. What this line of code is doing is it's reading, uh, so fread maybe stands for file read. It's looking for a file, and wants to read it into R. In this case, it's looking for the film permits.csv file. And it's also looking for that file in a particular location. It's looking for a data folder. So this is a file path. What it's saying is there's a folder named data and this slash uh, means that inside the folder is a file named film underscore permits.csv. So what's going on here is that R is looking in the working directory and it's looking for a folder named data. And it's looking inside that folder for this file. But look, in my directory that, I've, that I'm working in, I don't have a data folder. So that's why this line of code isn't working. It can't find the file. Let's quickly go get the data. In lab one, there is a link to download the R Markdown's lab.zip file. I'm going to right click on this and say download linked file and I'm going to put it right into our, our basics folder. So I'm saving that. It's downloading. Great. Let's look at that folder. Here it is. It's a zip file. I'm double clicking the zip file on the Mac. It will unzip it on uh, Windows. You need to unarchive this. I don't need this zip file anymore, so I've deleted it. I'm going into this folder and I'm looking for the data folder. Here it is, right there. If we open up this folder, we can see all the data files are in there. Now, this data folder needs to be in the root directory of your R project. The R basics folder is that root directory. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy the data folder 
right into there. That's all I need to do. I've deleted the other folders I downloaded. So now we have the data folder in here, and it's got all the data. We should be able to see that this has uh, happened in, our, in R now. So here's the data folder. If we click it, we can see all the data for all the labs. And we could also see there's a file called film underscore permits.csv. OK, so if we run this line of code now, it works. And if we went into the environment, we could see we've loaded up some data. Great. So that solves the problem of knowing how to load a CSV file from a data folder using library data.table and the fread function. All right, um, the next thing here is to talk about why order matters in some in R. We've talked about the idea before, but I want to show that to you with a few lines of code here. So what I'm going to do is add in some more code from lab one. Let's just scroll down, find some of the next things that happen. So here we're turning on the data table package. Here we're loading the data file. Let's skip this stuff and take a look at this little piece. I'm going to copy that in and this piece. Copy that in. All right. So now we've got a whole bunch of different pieces of code in here. And let's talk about running them. OK. What do you think is going to happen if we run this line of code? We should be turning on the package dplyr. Let's look in my list of packages to see if it's there. Yes, it is. I don't need to install it. If you ran this line of code and got an error, then you should install the package. Next, we have this line of code. What it does is it breaks up our big data frame um, and gives us some counts. If we were to look at this, the counts of the number of film permits requested in different boroughs in New York City. This line of code loads the ggplot2 library. And this line makes the graph that we made in lab one. OK, so far, so good. Uh, we could do all of these things at once by pressing play. And all of the code will compile and we'll make that graph. Also good. Let me show you some, some things where order matters. First of all, let's clear the workspace. Now we're starting from scratch. All right, we've got our code here. And what I want to do is I want to make the graph again. So how about I just highlight this line of code for making the graph and run just this line of code. So I'm pressing Command Enter. Oh, we get an error. It says object counts not found. What's going on? Well, remember we deleted everything in our environment. And that included deleting the data file. And it included deleting our counts data frame that we made. So because this line of code relies on the variable counts, it won't work because counts hasn't been made yet. We have to rerun these things. So for example, we have to rerun the loading function, rerun the counts function, and rerun our plot function. All right. So first things hap have to happen first. 
after you get a better sense of what you're doing in the labs in terms of the steps in the R code, you'll get a better idea of uh, how to understand what it is that's coming first and what is happening after those things. All right, sorry, that wasn't very clear. The next part is, where does the output go? I want to try to demonstrate an idea here that you, you may not be totally aware of. So the first question is, if you run a line of code in the console to make a variable, where does the variable get stored? Let's try that. Let's open up the console, make the variable A, put some numbers in it, press enter. So we just did that, it's right here. The variable gets stored in our environment. So that's where the output went. It went in here. What about if you run a line of code from an RMD file to make a variable? Where does the variable get stored? We're in an R markdown document. Let's make another variable in our code block. And let's run this. Now, what happened? Where did it go? If you notice, this line of code got copied into the console and it got run in the console. So now the output, that is the creation of the variable B, we can see that it is inside our global environment. So when you run code inside an R Markdown document like this, the output goes into this global environment. How about this? If you run a line of code from an RMD file, by knitting the RMD file, where does the variable get stored? The answer to this question might surprise you. First of all, let's clear the workspace. Next, let's make a new R Markdown document. I'm going to delete everything in this document to make it blank. I'm saving it as untitled. Now I'm going to make an R code block. And I'm going to make some variables. I'm not going to run this just yet. We should see here that um, we're making three variables, A, B, and C, and we're putting some numbers into them. Great. So let's run this document using the knit button and see what happens. Okay, we're printing out the document. Notice, however, um, when we look in our environment tab, the environment is empty. We've run the document, but we don't appear to have saved any of the variables. What's going on here is that whenever you press the knit button, RStudio opens up a separate version of R in the background, one that you can't see. And it runs all of the code in the document in this background version. And so it's like re redoing everything from the very beginning, from the very first part to the very last part all in a kind of internal version of R that you don't get to see. And uh, so where, where does the output of your variables go? When you press knit, it goes to this other place. And it's very important to remember that because it can sometimes trip you up. So for example, Imagine you wanted to, where are we here? Let's go back, right. Let's do a couple things for illustration purposes. Let's say you wanted to 
load, some data, or load the data table library. We just did that. Get the data. Now it's in here. And you wanted to run this bit of code to count the number of permits in each borough. All right. We just did that, it worked. Now, can anybody predict what's gonna happen when I press the knit button? This is, what we've seen is that the code works. If I press play, it all works just fine. What happens when I press knit? We get an error. And it says some things, it says something like could not find function, and then it's percent, arrow, percent. What's going on here? Let's take a look back at our original code. Remember, before we ran this little block to count up the number of permits, we also ran the function to load dplyr. And we're not doing that here, we're missing that. Let's take a look at our packages. We can see that in our current version of R, dplyr is checked on. So this seems maybe very confusing. But remember, when you press the knit button, RStudio opens up a blank version of R that hasn't been told to turn on the dplyr package. So when you press knit, it won't work because in this version of R that it's running in the background, it hasn't turned this package on. In order to make it work, you would have to tell it to turn the package on here before you run code that relies on this package. So now it will work. I guess I'll show you one more thing. Um, look, there's a whole bunch of what looks like kind of messy garbage here. We're getting warnings, we're getting a bunch of messages. Sometimes you don't want to look at that stuff in your output file. So we can turn warning equals to false and message equal to false. And now when we knit this, we just see our code and we don't have to see those annoying messages. All right, where are we now? We have talked about where the output goes. Next up are a little bit of deep dives into data frames and dplyr and ggplot2. Those will be in separate videos.